क्राइसिस डॉक्टर सुरेश शमोरकर एन एकेडमिक एन एजुकेशनिस्ट who on time and turn to translation and translation of uh, the great books the scriptures he has translated the buddhist text dhammapada the bhagavad gita yaneshwari the bible according to st john ural which is a tamil veda and a sikh text of on sikhism jupuji jupuji sahib he has also completed recently completed the krista purana which is a marathi uh, text one of the early books earliest books and all these translations have been into konkani so i request dr amorkar to can he speak the author of the book which is going to be released this evening mr mahabreshwar sai the translator of the book with the pai the publisher oxford university press many krishnan there is an tendency i am happy to be associated with the launching of mabreshwar sai's novel la originally titled as aranya kand and now titled in english as forest saga this book was originally written by sai way back in 1997 along with another twin novel called adrift <coughs> mr sail uh, calling now sail only is a multilingual writer he knows his mother tongue is konkani he is not exactly in born in goa across the border but very much born in the kokni soil because kokni soil stretches right from bengurla till mangalo and some of the goans went and settled down in cochin and now they are spread all over the world and all over india like a friend rajatik who is in delhi he could have written in kannada So he launched himself as a writer in Marathi, and perhaps later realized that his roots were deep, not in only in the soil, but also in the language. <coughs> Sai is a prolific writer who has published seven novels and five collections of short stories. He was awarded Central Sahitya Academy Award for Literature in 1993. His books have been translated into several Indian languages, and they are widely read all over the country, and also very well appreciated. And so I can say that today. Sir, he just not a Goan author, a Konkani author, but he has arrived on the stage of Indian literature really with a bang. The outstanding characteristic of Sir's writing is his inimitably simple style. He is a master of written word. and can will copy language with all its linguistic nuances with ease he has also mastered 
Several dialects of Kokni which stretch from Bengal and Chennai in the north till Mangalore and Cochin. So when he writes in Kokni, he uses all these dialects to make his point very effective. Sai did his studies in the formal school, but I think he has really schooled himself brilliantly in the eternal school of life. He started life as a son of a farmer, and while he was studying in the primary school, he was also tilling the soil. And, and Sahil has a military background, because his father fought in the First World War, and got almost lost, and came back two years after the war was over, as he was a prisoner of war. With his military tradition in the family, Sai joined Indian Army, assisted in Operation Vijaya, which liberated Goa from the Portuguese, and served later on the Indo Pak War in 1965, had several brushes with death, and survived. Later served as Shanti Sainik on Egypt-Israel border. Later, he worked in the deep forest of Elapur in Karnataka, joined Goa police forces, and retired as postmaster in 2003. Said is a keen observer of men, matters, and life around him. He is very sensitive, very observant, and picks up experiences like a blotting paper and uses them later in his creative writing. Sayed has brought into fiction the distilled essence of his agrarian background and the, in enriching experiences of his life in the army. This was a new subject which hitherto was never touched by any Gon author. Because a lot of Gons have served in the Indian armed forces, but they never wrote anything about the army in their books or about their careers. Sai's creative sensibility is molded by his rural upbringing and is fine-tuned to the natural environment. We find that the human characters are not the only protagonists in his novels. Nature is the real protagonist in both the book, this book, which is going to be released today, or his saga, and Adrushta. In Kali Ganga, which focuses on a dis decisive convergence of nature and culture on an individual's destiny in traditional society, the river Kali Ganga is the protagonist. The universal appeal of the novel is a portrayal of timeless reality, celebrating the kinship between womanhood and environment. The novel exposes the subservient role women have to play in an agrarian male-dominated Indian society. Sain is a prolific writer, very studious, 
very hard working and researches all the themes of his novel thoroughly. The most daring thing he did was to write on the Inquisition, a novel on the Inquisition called Lucas Sanwar, Cataclysm, dealing with the terrible Inquisition which Goans experienced. And today, even today, people don't feel comfortable talking about the atrocities of the Inquisition because there's always fears that our comments might tread the very many toes. The novel probes the social political subversion of Goan society after the Portuguese conquest of Goa in 1510. The novel touches upon all aspects of human behavior manifested in the actions of the Portuguese colonizer and the Goan also, who is colonized. This novel, which has been recently written by Sahil in Marathi, has within a year's time, has gone into two editions. Paul Mura is another novel published in 2006. Focuses on the Gauda community, which has not changed over centuries, though they were converted to Christianity almost four centuries ago. Houghton Till, written in 2009, depicts fine sensitivity the life and destiny of a small community of the Kokni Kumars of Potters. Sail deals with the marginalization of the Potters as a result of lopsided development uh, policies initiated by government agencies. Sail's dream novelas Adrushta and Arankanya, which is now going to be published, were published for the first time in a single volume. In spite of their limited canvas and the narrow spectrum of the plot, both focus on the universal themes, human predicament and fate. Based on Adrushta, a feature film called Altar of Manis was uh, produced and filmed at the International Film Festival in Canada and won the prize for the best story. And so Sahil became international some time ago. In Aranya Khan, Khan, the saga of a band of <coughs> exploited laborers who having lost their way struggled to survive in an utterly hostile and unalting environment with a dense plot structure and an open-ended finale. The novella hits the ideal pitch of narration and intensity. Said is a master of tragic narrative, which shuns melodrama. His narration evokes compassion. While reading this novella, I felt that I was reading a canto from a great epic. We are going to read this book and so I'm not going to tell much about this book but the comparisons they say are odious. I'm reminded of Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway's 
all men and the sea is a novel which won the Nobel Prize. And there, the sea is the protagonist. The ocean, the unfathomable ocean is a protagonist. And the message of the book ultimately, after all the struggles, because many of you must have read it, man can be defeated but never destroyed. That is the human spirit. And it is precisely this message that is also given by society to us in Horus Saga. It's a day of celebration for Sai, for Vidya Pai, who is the translator, and for the publishers. The publication of Arundhya Khan, Sai, a great Indian writer, not just to say Kokni writer, is now going to be in the hands of English speaking readers. And I'm sure this, this book, which has been, I've not read it, but I've read other books translated by Vidya Pai, very competent translator. She has done upheaval, and she's also done so many other stories about uh, 50 short stories from Pokni into English. I'm sure that this book will be translated into very many foreign, European, African, and Asian, and South American languages. I'm sure about that. And uh, Mr. Sain has already got so many awards. And I'm sure that with the publication of this book, you'll get many, many more awards to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Munkar. We have a copy of the book for a ceremonial uh, release. So I request Dr. Munkar to kindly release. Aranya Khan, Forest Saga, by Mahabaleshwar Sale, an exclusive launch for the Goa Arts and Literary Festival. for Oxford University Press. I request her to give a few, a few words on. Thank you, Mr. Gentlemen. Hosts, the organizers of this wonderful festival for both art and literature, the distinguished um, main speakers of the inauguration, Professor Edwin Tambo, with whom I have a history, I'm sure you won't remember. 26 years ago, when I was editing a, an anthology of Kalman's literature with Seed in Arsumir, I asked him to lower his fee for his poem. <laughs> I still have the letter. He said, Madam, I, it's one way. Madam, I've yet to meet a publisher who doesn't travel first class. <laughs> but to come to, uh, to come to this evening's function, I thank the organizers for this great opportunity for us to release uh, a translation of a Konkani book. This is the on only the second Konkani volume I've edited for OUP, sourced and edited. Thanks to Vidya. Uh, I'd like to make a link between what Professor Thumbo read about great houses and the content of this book by Mahavalisha Sain. There are two Indias, you know, the grand houses, the beautifully the delicate, embroidered, wrought iron windows, uh, but behind it a huge struggling mass who don't have 
a grand past, but whose lives are equally important, experiences <coughs> equally valid. And that's what I'm so happy that we're able to record. Very few people can do what you did to show the, the struggle, the despair, and yet the, the victory of the human spirit. So for that, uh, I'd like to celebrate the, the language, the writer, the content, the theme uh, in this country. And we're also privileged because one third of this, one third of Asia's illiterates is in this country. So we, we can read, we can discuss, we can talk. We're very fortunate to just be here at all. I thank everyone yet again. Thank you. Thank you, madam. We'll have a short reading from the book, uh, Selba, and, and then the English translation. By Japan. Can we read a short? Dr. Monkar mentioned that uh, Sahil Bab was in the Indian Army. And sooner or later, an author's experiences come into their work. And there is one story, short story in Karanga, the collection of short stories which won him the Sahitya Academy Award, which is titled Tu Parto Kitya Kailo. Why did you come back? That is a young boy who joins the army, and there is some kind of false accusation made on him, and he deserts the army and comes back home. And the mother is late at night, he knocks on the door. The mother asks him, why have you come back? What is it? Have you run away? She does not open the door for him. She gives him some food and she has, he has a bath outside and he returns back to the army. Those accusations are resolved and he eventually joins the army and continues to have a great career. But the title of the story is Tu Porto Kityagaila, Kosoaila. And the mother's determination that he should continue to serve the uh, armed forces in the country.
आमची हे मनशात त्या महिन्याला आम चंडा हवे पहिली जायती मनशात हायचे पहिली जायती मनशात गिळल्या त्या राणा या राणा शरीरलो मनीस सोडून काढा म्हणजे समुद्रातला सुई काढा तुम्ही हंगा येऊन पावले तेच वड मानाल उभे साठ महिला आणि आडवे साठ महिने असे पातळ नाही राणा तातली झाडा लेगी कुचकामाची काट्या कुठे काट्या कुट्याची आणि काल्या होण्याची हे आय तुम्ही आमचे सोयरे The tide was the first one to recover. She slipped the rope around the neck of the pot and lowered it into the well. The public sound of the water entered the pot and brought others to their senses, and they gathered around her with cupped palms. The tide poured the water into each one's outstretched hands. She gave some to the little ones and splashed water on their faces, pausing to drink some herself. A few people had emerged from the hut and was standing on one side staring at them amazed who are you creatures from the forest no we are from the plains lost our way in the forest those who get lost in the forest on the upper slopes are doomed we've lost many of our loved ones on the way this forest has swallowed many a soul looking for someone who has lost his way in this forest is like looking for a needle in the ocean consider yourselves lucky to have come here This forest stretches 60 miles in length and 60 miles in breadth and is covered with prickly bushes and shrubs and thorny trees. Come, you are our guests today. Thank you. Selva, you will be happy. With this we come to the close of this book launch. and i request our guests to kindly take the audience